I'm not, I know I'm not better than a lot of people out there. I'm not, you know, anything special, right? But I have words that I want to put down onto paper and put into a song. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, James, how you feeling, buddy? Pretty good. Consuming some uh, store-bought cold brew coffee. Gotta love that caffeine, man. Yeah, I can't live without it. Well, we're here uh, really just to break down, you know, kind of what went in into our heads throughout the production of this album. In addition to that, you know, the artistic decisions that we made in regards to how it makes you feel rather than exactly how it sounds. So. Um, without further ado, we're getting it started. This first song is called Enough. Um, drunk enough to rock, smooth enough to roll. James, how do you feel about this little uh, lick you did at the beginning here? We tried to make it as melodic as possible. Less snare, yeah, let's, more toms. Yeah, and Turner wanted a full album of toms. All right, so here's this next part is kind of interesting. This is the effect where even if you're sober, you know, it kind of makes you feel like you do when you got a little bit of a buzz going. You know, it kind of fades in and out just for a second, you know, makes you feel a little disoriented. And so even if it may seem like, you know, it drowns out the lyrics a little bit, that's kind of the point, you know? With the uh, rhythm instruments on this record, we really started with the bass on every single song. The one bass guitar really was the, the foundation of the whole thing, really. Thanks to Mike over at Funny Farms. Mike had this old bass sitting in his barn and, you know, wasn't really using it and said, look, you want to refurbish it and play it, go for it. So <laughs> I took it to Shallow Music over in Mount Juliet, had them tinker with it for a while, put some new strings on it, and by God, that's what laid the foundation for this whole album. That and Jimmy Legs over here on the drums. I think, uh, I think this song and All I Caught are about as close to a... Uh you know, your your brand as possible. This next, yeah, this next one's called Home, right? Yeah, this next one is, uh, this is actually the one that, you know, I've, I've been singing in the songwriting competition. Um, it's for a chance to play at the Bluebird and a new Taylor guitar. And this is the song I chose. And, uh, you know, I've advanced to the next, next round. You know, we'll have updates about that. Um, but there's an interesting point towards the end of this song, uh, production-wise. We, we decided to leave... We left space initially for like a solo or some kind of a lead track. You'll notice we uh, decided not to put a solo in it, not to put a, a final chorus in it. And it kind of leaves you longing, like the whole, whole point of the song, you know? Your audience is, you know, worrying where the end of the song went. They're like... This is raw as raw gets. This is one take on the guitar, one take on vocals, and just raw as can be you know very dry probably has a little reverb a little eq a little compression but that's probably about it both the last song and this one i had a chord progression and kind of a way i wanted the melody of the vocals to go um but ultimately once we started sitting down with the you know james laid a drum track and i laid a bass line for it it kind of took on a much more alt rock kind of vibe to it it's way more um indie i guess you could say which all of it's indie but it's a lot more obscure and modern sounding than most of the rest of the album. The interesting thing with this is you wanted, Turner wanted a floor tom beat and I was like, I immediately thought of something kind of like XTC, like making plans for Nigel. And then I was like, that post-punk thing turned into indie. You want to tell everybody kind of the backstory behind the intro outro interludes? Mm -hmm. The intro interlude, which is coming up as we speak actually, and outro, are uh, really all one long jam session. And then we just cut pieces out of it that we thought would be good as intro and outro material. And this was a long jam session. It took a lot of turns. There's other things that we still may use from that. There's a lot of good material in there. It's just, you know, a bass, too. bass and a drum, boom, done deal. This right here, you know, I guess we... We were trying to find a we were trying to find a clip of Dr. Phil saying we'll be right back 
but all we could find was snippets of people either mocking Dr. Phil or Adam Ray's version of Dr. Phil saying we'll be right back and so we kind of had to do it ourselves and then cover it up with a bunch of other you know effects so that it was like you know you couldn't tell if it was dr phil or james or me or whoever was yelling into the mic you know this yeah this is uh think this song actually started with just lyrics all i had in the book was the lyrics to this song it started with james on the drums i literally was like just lay a drum track and, and then he laid this one and it was like Dude, that's sick. All right, well, here's what's in my head, right? And I started messing around with the bass. You know, he, he was on the keyboard messing around. I was like, I really want it to be this kind of melody. And I kind of scabbed a beat bop, explained what I want, you know, like, kind of like this. And he was like, well, well, how about like this? But instead we do like this. And then it was back and forth, back and forth. I don't even remember what chords I used. I'm not too much of a keyboardist. If it wasn't for the, the collaborative effort, this song would literally just be an acapella poetry jam. You know, I mean, all this is, you know, in studio writing process. So it's really, I'm, I'm proud of how it came out and I'm excited to be able to collaborate. You know, it's good to be able to have that back and forth. I would say this is the most unique song on the album. It was really just like this instant new thing. Yeah, it was, it was a blank slate except for the lyrics. It was like, okay, let's just new song now, unorthodox structure of the song. All right, so this next one, this is uh, Art of Going Into Debt. This this song actually was going to be the title track. This was the, the main, the album was going to be called The Art of Going Into Debt. And uh, we went through a lot of stuff with this song, man. I'm telling you. Oh, my gosh. I would say the biggest improvement really is that uh, as much as I loved the sort of punk vibes of the first version of it, um, it just became, like, too drawn out. It was, like... There was a whole nother verse and another and another chorus on it. And there actually was a really cool like prog breakdown thing too. Like honestly, the song was the idea yeah, the idea was incredible, but it was too drawn out and I realized like, okay, I, I guess I'm down to revisit this song, but let's uh let's let's try and simplify the structure and make it more straightforward since it is, you know, still kind of a verse chorus song. I was like we're doing too much, and I would even still say the way we we performed it may have been too much. But uh, and this next one is Turner's uh, surf country song. It's really rockabilly, like, kind of out yeah, there. Yeah, like the Trashman or something. I don't know. I just kind of felt this one. Like, you know, again, I started with lyrics, and I had kind of an idea of how I wanted it to sound. I couldn't manage to put it into words to my boy over here. I was like, I want it to kind of be like this, but almost like this. He was like, was crazy, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're making no sense, Turner. And whenever I went to, after re revamping the lyrics and I went to sing it, the original melody I had for the lyrics did not work at all. And it just kind of flowed out of me, this like first wave punk, rattle it off and just yell at the mic kind of style. And it somehow ended up melodic. It's the type of thing you wouldn't expect to have just worked, but he, I don't know, he just freestyled it and it worked. I like how it turned out. It definitely was, uh, definitely was different, but at the end of the day, Hey, you know, if it works, it works. This one's called uh, Savor It. This is, so this song we had a, a production, I don't know if it was a breakthrough or like the worst thing to, to ever happen to us. But basically we realized one of these stock Reaper plugins, it's called AU Reverb and there's a setting called Cathedral. And Turner was like, how do I make it sound like I'm in the biggest place ever? And I was like, oh, like this? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that's perfect. It kind of matches the vibe, though. It's supposed to be bigger than it is, you know? This final song here, this is, of course, Alone. This is the Rockabilly song. Yeah. We tried to make it sound like late 50s, early 60s rock and roll like if Johnny Cash, kind of stuff. If Johnny Cash wanted to start a bluegrass punk band. I'm 100% I'm on board with all the skits, too. I think the skits are the way to go. I miss how albums, a lot of them don't have that anymore. I like a skit. I like something to tie it together and say, okay, well, you know, we started out here and this is where we're at now and, and bring you along for the ride. Well, James, thanks for sitting down and going over this with everybody. You know, I know, you know, the people out there that'll watch this video from start to finish appreciate, you know, the insight into what was going through our minds and, you know, what kind of goes into it. Um, 
you know, if you want to promote your stuff, this would be a good chance for that. Well, I, uh, I've got a band going called Smoky Sip. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's a pretty cool uh, group. We're uh, ready to be hired. We play uh, some pretty funky, jazzy stuff. If you want to check out uh, our music, we've got a single called Don't Expect. And it should be on all platforms. That's uh, Smoky Sip, Don't Expect. Right on. Well... Appreciate it, dude. Well, that was, yeah, that was, uh, that was the Temp Tilted liner notes. In case you forgot that it's Temp Tilted on the Temp Tilted channel by Temp Tilted, that you're watching Temp Tilted on currently, this is Temp Tilted. Well, dude, appreciate you sitting down with me. Cheers. Let's have another oh, coffee and, uh, tried. let's roll. <laughs> <laughs>